little fox. Little Red Riding Hood. Once upon a time, there lived a very sweet girl. She always wore a red cape with a hood. So everyone called her Little Red Riding Hood. What a beautiful day it is! Hello, Birdie. Good morning, Mr. Squirrel. One day, Little Red Riding Hood's mother had some bad news. Your grandma is sick. I made her some food, but I can't take it to her. Poor grandma. I'll take it, mother. What a good girl you are. Here's the food. Be careful going through the forest. I will. Goodbye, mother. Grandma lived on the other side of the forest. So Little Red Riding Hood took the basket and left for Grandma's. In the forest lived a big, bad, and very hungry wolf. There's nothing to eat in this forest. I'm sick of squirrels. The rabbits taste rotten. I want something new and yummy. Just then. Little Red Riding Hood walked by. She stopped when she saw the wolf. Oh, hello, Mr. Wolf. Now she looks very tasty. Good day, little girl. Where are you going? To my grandma's house. She's very sick. Talking to strangers, especially hungry ones, is dangerous. But Little Red Riding Hood did not know that. That's too bad. Where does your grandma live? Maybe I can visit her too. She lives on the other side of the forest. It's very easy to find. Hurry along then. You mustn't keep Grandma waiting. So Little Red Riding Hood continued on her way. The wolf. Watched her go. He had a plan. I'll run to her grandma's house and wait. Then, when she comes, the wolf ran through the forest to grandma's house. Hello, anybody home? There was no answer. The house looked empty. Where could grandma be? Just then. The wolf heard Little Red Riding Hood coming up to the house, so the wolf put on Grandma's shawl. Then he jumped into the bed. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's Little Red Riding Hood, Grandma. I brought some food for you. Oh, how lovely! Come inside, dear. Grandma. What's wrong with your voice? It's this terrible cold. Grandma, what big arms you have! All the better to hug you with, my dear. Grandma, what big ears you have! All the better to hear you with, my dear. Grandma, what? Big eyes you have. All the better to see you with, my dear. Grandma, what big teeth you have! All the better to eat you with, my dear. Poor little Red Riding Hood. Ah! Help! Help! There's no one to help you. You're mine now. The wolf caught her with his big arms. He opened his mouth. He was about to bite her with his big, sharp teeth when. What's going on? I'm going to eat up your granddaughter. Yum! <laughs> well, I was just about to make some soup. Let me put some vegetables in. 
Then you can put her in too, Grandma. Don't worry. Grandma wasn't really going to let the wolf eat Little Red Riding Hood. Grandma had a plan too. Hurry up! I'm starving. Hold your horses. I'm almost done. The vegetables Grandma put in the pot were hot chili peppers. She stirred the soup with a big wooden spoon. <laughs> Taste this, Mr. Wolf. <coughs> ah, it's burning my mouth. Oh no! Here, eat this. You'll feel better. <coughs> Ow! My mouth is on fire. Ow! Oh dear! Have some water. Ah, uh, help! Get me out of here! Ah! With his mouth, tongue, and throat <laughs> on fire, the wolf ran out of Grandma's house as fast as he could. They never saw him again. Now, Little Red Riding Hood, did you learn your lesson? Yes, Grandma. I'll never speak to strangers again, and I'll never eat Grandma's soup. The end. Henny Penny. Henny Penny was a chicken. She was a hungry chicken. One day, she was looking for food on the ground. Suddenly, a nut fell off of a tree. The nut hit Henny Penny on the head. Oh my! The sky is falling. I must tell the king. Henny Penny said. She ran by the barn. Cocky Locky said, "Cockadoodledoo!" Henny Penny, where are you going? Henny Penny replied. The sky is falling. I must tell the king. Why don't you come too? I will, Cocky Locky said. They ran by the lake. Ducky Lucky said, "Quack quack, Henny Penny and Cocky Locky, where are you going?" They replied, "The, the sky, sky is falling. falling. We, We must tell, tell the king. king. Why, Why don't, don't you come, come too?" I will," Ducky Lucky said. They ran by the river. Goosey Lucy said, "Honk honk, Henny Penny, Cocky Locky, and Ducky Lucky, where are you going?" They replied, "The, the sky, sky is, is falling. falling. We, We must, must tell, tell the king. king. Why, Why don't, don't you come, come too? too?" I will," Goosey Lucy said. They ran into the forest. Turkey Lurkey said, "Gobble, gobble, gobble! Penny Penny, Cocky Lucky, Ducky Lucky, and Goosey Lucy, where are you going?" They replied, "The, the sky, sky is falling. falling. We, We must tell the king. king. Why, Why don't, don't you come, come too?" I will," Turkey Lurkey said. They ran by a cave. Foxy Loxy saw Henny Penny, Cocky Locky, Ducky Lucky, Goosey Lucy, and Turkey Lurkey. I will invite them into my cave. Then I can eat them," said Foxy Loxy. Ah, Henny Penny, Cocky Locky, Ducky Lucky, Goosey Lucy, and Turkey Lurkey. Where are you going? They replied, "The, the sky, sky is falling. falling. We, We must tell the king. Why don't you come too?" "I will, but first rest in my cave," said Foxy Loxy. Suddenly, a nut fell off of a tree. The nut hit Foxy Loxy on the head. "Oh my! The sky is falling. We must tell the king. You must come too." She cried, but Henny Penny, Cocky Locky, Ducky Lucky, Goosey Lucy, and Turkey Lurkey said, 
The, the sky is not falling. A nut fell on your head. Let's all go home. But Foxy Loxy kept saying, The sky is falling. The sky is falling. Henny Penny, Cocky Locky, Ducky Lucky, Goosey Lucy, and Turkey Lurkey all laughed. Foxy Loxy shouted again, The sky is falling. Then she ran away to tell the king. The Three Little Pigs Once upon a time, there lived three little pigs. Their names were Curly, Chunky, and Pinky. One day, they decided to see the world. Bye-bye, boys. Take care. Bye, Mama. Well, I'm going this direction. I'm going that way. I think I'll head over there. The three pigs went in different directions. Curly met a goat selling straw. I'll build a house of straw. So he bought some straw and built his house. There, what a cozy home. Curly relaxed in his new home. But there was one problem. Knock, knock. Oh, you who? Who's there? A friend, Willis the Wolf. Now, let me in. Mama Pig taught her sons never to open the door to strangers, especially strangers with big teeth. No, no, not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. Let me in, or I'll huff and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down. No, you can't come in, you big bully. I'm going to huff, I'm going to puff, and I'm going to blow your house down. It wasn't that hard. Straw houses fall easily. Now, little pig, I'm going to eat you up. Help! Meanwhile, Chunky met a beaver selling sticks. I'll build a house with sticks. So he bought some sticks and built his house. There, what a pleasant home. Chunky looked at his new house with pride. But there was one problem. Chunky, <laughs> help! Eek, it's a wolf. Hurry inside, lock the door. Knock, knock. Let me in. No, not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. Let me in, or I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. You can't come in. I'm gonna huff, I'm gonna puff, and I'm gonna blow your house down. It wasn't that hard. Stick houses fall easily. <laughs> Now, I'm going to eat you up. Help! Meanwhile, Pinky met a horse selling bricks. I'll build my house with bricks. So he bought some bricks and started his house. This will be a strong home. Pinky took his time to build a brick house. My house is almost finished. I'll put one more brick on the chimney. But there was one problem. Pinky! Help! help! A wolf is chasing us! Get inside quick and lock the door! Well, what do we have here? That pig is trapped on the roof. There's no place for him to run. Hello, little pig! It's that bully, the wolf. What will I do? I know. Pinky climbed into his chimney and slid down. In the house, Curly and Chunky were scared. The wolf is chasing us. He's going to eat us up. I have an idea. 
Fill that pot with water. Pinky built a hot fire. Then the three little pigs put the pot on the fire. Knock, knock. Let me in. No, not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. I blew down a straw house. I blew down a stick house. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down too. Go ahead and try. I'm going to huff. I'm going to puff, and I'm going to blow your house down. I'm waiting. I said I'm going to blow your house down. Brick houses don't fall so easily. It doesn't matter. I can be as clever as the pig. Oh no! He's climbing up the house. He's climbing onto the roof. Let's see. The water is boiling nice and hot. I'll slide down the chimney just like that pig. Willis licked his lips and hopped down the chimney. But there was just one problem. When Willis fell in, Pinky covered the pot. Ah! Ow! Let me out! I'll let you out if you promise to leave us alone. I promise. Willis left town and never came back. We won't see him again. Well, it's time to build another house. Let's get started. Pinky helped his brothers. When Mama Pig came, they all had new, strong brick homes. What beautiful homes, boys! I'm glad you built your houses of brick. You never know what might happen. And the three little pigs smiled. The end. The three wishes. Once upon a time, a woodcutter and his wife lived in the forest. They were poor but very happy. The woodcutter worked very hard. One day, he went to look for some trees to cut. He found a very tall and strong tree in the forest. He raised his axe to chop it down when suddenly he heard a voice. Please help me! Help me! He wondered where the voice was coming from. The woodcutter looked down at a fallen tree behind him and saw a fairy. The fairy's wings were caught under the huge tree. Please help me get out of here! My wings are stuck. Pleaded the fairy. Oh, poor fairy! Said the woodcutter. But how can I remove this big tree? Use your axe, instructed the fairy. So the woodcutter wedged his axe under the fallen tree trunk and lifted it carefully. Well done, thank you, said the fairy. You're welcome, said the woodcutter as he returned to work. I have to chop down this big tree before it is dark. I'd like to reward you for saving my life," said the fairy. "Go back home and make three wishes. All three wishes will come true." When the woodcutter heard this, he quickly ran home. "Oh dear!" he called to his wife. "First, cook us a delicious meal." Then I will give you some surprising and wonderful news. We only have some soup," said his wife. "I wish we had some sausage too." Suddenly, a string of sausages appeared on the table. "Oh no!" cried the woodcutter. "A fairy gave us three wishes. Now we only have two left. You wasted a wish." Oh, I wish these sausages were stuck in your nose. Suddenly, the sausages were stuck in his wife's nose. Ah, what's going on? She yelled. Oh no! Now we've used up two wishes. Yelled the woodcutter. But <laughs> oh, how funny you look! <laughs> He laughed. His wife was getting angry. I have sausages stuck in my nose. Why are you laughing? Help me! 
Oh, I wish... No, no! Please stop! Be careful what you say! We have only one wish left, said her husband. First, let's try to remove the sausages from your nose. So they tried to pull the sausages out of her nose. They put grease on the sausages and her nose. They pulled and pulled some more, but the sausages stayed stuck in her nose. The woodcutter and his wife were very sad. What should we do now? I wanted to wish for a big house and food, she said. But only one wish is left, and I cannot live with these sausages in my nose. We have no choice, agreed her husband. We must use our last wish to get the sausages out. His wife was relieved. In a loud, clear voice, she said, I wish that the sausages were out of my nose. And right away the sausages came out of her nose. What a waste! I was going to wish for some firewood to keep us warm this winter, said the woodcutter. Well, we were content before we had the three wishes, and we can be content without them. You are right, honey, smiled his wife. We can always be happy. So they ate the sausages for supper. Kyanu and Qingyao Once upon a time, there lived a beautiful girl. Qingyao was the daughter of the King of Heaven. Her father loved her very much. Qingyao was beautiful and kind-hearted. She was also an excellent weaver. The king decided it was time for Qingyao to get married. A search began to find her a husband, but it was not easy. After many days, the king was about to give up. Finally, one day, the king found the perfect husband for Qingyao. Yes, that's him. He will marry my daughter, shouted the excited king. And so, Qianu, the cattle farmer, and Qingyao were married. Qingyao and Qianu loved each other very much. They spent every day together. Kyanu, mind your cows, the angry king yelled. Oh, I beg your mercy, your highness, <laughs> giggled Kyanu. Qingyo did not have time for her weaving. Kyanu did not have time for his cows. They only had time for each other. The king was very angry at Qingyo and Kyanu. Since you got married, you have become lazy scolded the king. Look at your cows. Look at your weaving frame. For this, you Kyanu will be sent to the east, and you Qingyu will be sent to the west. Qingyu and Kyanu began crying before the king. <laughs> On the seventh day of July, you shall meet, the king continued. But the Milky Way will separate you forever. So after one year, on the seventh day of July, they saw each other again. It was not a happy meeting. Qingyo and Qianu longed to be together, but the Milky Way still lay between them. Qingyo and Qianu were not the only ones who were unhappy. It must be the seventh day of July again, shouted the animals and the birds. Every year, Qingyo and Qianu's tears fell to the earth. Their many tears caused floods. The creatures of the earth held a meeting. It is because Qingyo and Qianu are apart, complained the crow. Their tears caused the floods, <laughs> sniffed the deer. They must meet or we will all die from their tears, said the rabbit. But how? The Milky Way stands between them, cried the deer. All the creatures thought and thought what to do. Finally, they came up with a brilliant plan. All the crows on the earth gathered together. They flew up to the sky, higher and higher. Then, one by one, the birds lay down and formed a bridge. 
It was the day for Qianru and Qingyu to meet again. What is this? It is a bridge for me to cross, Qianru exclaimed when he saw what the crows had done. Can this be true? Is that my beloved husband? Qingyu shouted. At last, Qingyu and Qianru were together once again. Thanks to the birds and the bridge they made, Qingyu and Qianru could meet every year. On a clear night, you can still see Qingyu and Qianru in the stars. Qingyu as the harp and Qianru as the eagle are separated by the Milky Way. It no longer floods on the seventh day of July, but it may rain a little, not from tears of sorrow, but from tears of joy. The Falling Star Two sisters were watching the stars one night. Which is your favorite? asked the younger sister. I like Bright Star. It is the prettiest, and one day I will marry that star, replied the older sister. <laughs> the two sisters laughed and then went inside to bed. The next morning, the two sisters were walking through the woods. The older sister saw a white cat caught in a tree. The beautiful cat looked very scared, and so the older sister decided to climb the tree and rescue it. As the older sister climbed the tree, the cat also climbed higher. In fact, as the cat climbed higher, the tree grew taller. So, the older sister kept climbing and climbing, trying to help the cat. Soon they were very high above the forest, but the cat kept climbing. Then, to the girl's surprise, she had reached the stars. She stepped off the tree and into the world of the stars. The cat was not a cat at all. He was a very handsome star man. What am I doing here? asked the girl. Last night you said that you wanted to marry me, replied the man. So I brought you here to the star world. You can live in this beautiful land with me. The star people were very kind, and the star man was a wonderful husband. Soon the girl was very happy in the beautiful star world. In fact, soon the girl turned into a star herself. One day, the star man said to his new wife, You may go anywhere you like. But please do not pick any white turnips. King Star has made it a rule. One day when the girl was in the garden, she saw the white turnips. She became very curious, and she decided to pick just one. It was very difficult to pick the turnip. She had to pull and pull. When she finally pulled the turnip, there was a large hole. The girl peeked through the hole. Down below, she could see her younger sister watching the stars. Her younger sister looked very sad and lonely. This made the older sister sad too, because she missed her younger sister a lot. The older sister created a plan. She would make a rope so that she could climb up and down between the stars and the earth. When the long rope was finished, she began to climb down but the rope was not nearly long enough. She tried to climb back up, but she was not strong enough. Soon, she lost her grip and fell to the earth. The younger sister watched the stars every night. One night, she saw a beautiful falling star. As she watched the bright star fall, she remembered her older sister. She pictured her sister's face and missed her even more. But she knew that she would never see her older sister again. Jack's Pay Long, long ago, a boy named Jack lived with his mother. Jack was not very bright, but he was kind and diligent. One day, Jack worked hard at a mill by a stream. He was paid two silver coins. On his way home, Jack played with the coins. But suddenly, he stubbed his toe on a rock. Ouch! Oh no, the coins! He cried, but it was too late. Splash, splash! 
Each of the silver coins splashed into the stream. When Jack arrived home with nothing, his mother got very angry. Next time, be sure to put your pay into your pocket, she said. I will, mother, said Jack. Later, Jack worked very hard at a bakery. In return, he got paid a loaf of bread. On his way back home, he stuffed the bread into his pocket, just like Mother said. When he got home, he ran to his mother. Mother, look! I put my pay in my pocket. Jack pulled the bread out of his pocket. Oh, the bread crumbled. He said, "Jack, next time be sure to carry your pay on your head." His mother told him. Later, Jack worked on a farm. He worked very hard, and he got paid a large jar of milk. Hmm. I must put this jar on my head, just like my mother told me. He thought. Jack carefully balanced the jar of milk on his head. But Jack had to walk under a tree with a lot of branches. The jar of milk on his head hit a branch. Oh no! He cried. When Jack returned home, he was so sad that he almost cried. Jack, don't feel so sad. Next time, be sure to carry your pay on your shoulders. I will, mother. <laughs> Later. Jack worked very hard at the market. The master liked how diligently he worked, so he gave Jack one of his donkeys. This time, I will put the donkey on my shoulders. Then I can take it home safely. Jack said, but the donkey was so heavy that Jack could not walk in a straight line. Oh, what a heavy donkey! Jack sang a silly song to forget the donkey's weight. Doodly do, doodly do. The donkey cried because it felt so uncomfortable too. Hee haw, hee haw. Jack tried very hard not to drop the donkey, so he did not see the king and the princess having a picnic by the road. The princess saw Jack zigzagging across the road. And heard him and the donkey singing a funny song. <laughs> That is the funniest thing I have ever seen. <laughs> She laughed. Oh, my daughter is laughing," said the king. "She is laughing at last." The princess had not laughed since her mother had died. No one had made her laugh since then. The king was so pleased to see the princess laugh. That he called out to Jack, "You, my son, you have made my daughter laugh. Please be my daughter's husband." Jack kneeled. "Oh, your Majesty!" So Jack and his mother went to the castle. Jack married the princess. Jack and the princess laughed all the time and lived happily ever after. Ha ha ha! Doodly do, doodly do. The Gingerbread Man. One day, an old woman made a gingerbread cookie. It looked like a little man. How good you smell! I will eat you," said the woman. But the cookie came to life. He shouted, "Run, run, as fast as you can! You can't catch me. I'm the Gingerbread Man." And he ran away. The woman ran after the cookie, but he ran very fast. She could not catch the gingerbread man. The cookie ran past a dog. Woof! How good you smell! I will eat you," said the dog. The gingerbread man shouted, "Run, run, as fast as you can! You can't catch me." I'm the gingerbread man. The dog ran after the cookie, but the cookie ran very fast. The dog could not catch the gingerbread man. The cookie ran past a child. Stop! How good you smell! I will eat you," said the child. 
the gingerbread man shouted. Run, run, as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. The child ran after the cookie, but the cookie ran very fast. The child could not catch the gingerbread man. The cookie ran past a cow. Moo! How good you smell! I will eat you, said the cow. The gingerbread man shouted. Run, run, as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. The cow ran after the cookie. But the cookie ran very fast. The cow could not catch the gingerbread man. The cookie ran and ran. No one could catch the gingerbread man. Soon, he was tired. He fell asleep by a tree. Suddenly, a noise woke him up. The noise became louder and louder. Stop! It was the woman, the dog, the Stop! child, and the cow. The cookie shouted, Run, run, as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. The cookie ran and ran. He came to a river. I cannot swim, cried the gingerbread man. Then he heard a voice. Do you want to cross the river? Asked a fox. Yes, I do, said the cookie. Then jump on my back. I will take you to the other side, said the fox. The fox stepped into the river. The cookie jumped on her back and held on to her fur. The fox swam and swam. The water got higher and higher. Finally, the fox said, The water is too high. You must sit on my nose. The gingerbread man climbed on top of the fox's nose. With a flip and a snap, the gingerbread man was gone. The fox smiled and licked her paw. What a delicious cookie, she said. The next day, the old woman made another gingerbread cookie. It looked like a little man. She baked the cookie in the oven. Then she let it cool. How good you smell. I will eat you, said the woman. But the cookie came to life. It was the gingerbread man. He shouted, Run, run, as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. And he ran away. The woman ran after the cookie, but he ran very fast. She could not catch the gingerbread man. I smell gingerbread, the fox said. She licked her paw. She waited for the gingerbread man to arrive at the river. You see, some cookies never learn, the fox said.